Ah, oh, bloody hell. Still got a cold, I'm afraid, so you're just going to have to bear with that. And the reason why you get these little cheeky songs is because as I load the studio up and I'm loading it with the mix, that's the mix I'm doing for a certain singer right now, I think I'm going to be spending a lot more time on that mix than I originally thought I would. Not because I can't do it, because I'm doing an amazing job. And I've decided to let divine intervention guide me, so to speak. And until that changes, it'll really be focusing on that single track. But anyway, the reason why I'm saying this is because normally when I load the studio up, I use Akaisis off a laptop to load the 6000 sampler up. And that takes about 5, 10 minutes, maybe 15, but it feels quicker than that. So what I always do, I open up and I, I, I start loading the sampler, everything else is ready, and then I record a couple of things on the fly. I just make someone up. I put the piano on or the, the corgo one, uh, stick the microphone on, and I record. And I always make sure I do a couple of things. I couldn't care how shit they are, how good they are, how amazing. It's spontaneous freestyle recording. No writing, no pen, no paper, no clever crap. You, let's just say I become the medium whereby which information is conveyed through. Where it comes from, I don't know. Where it goes, what well, on the internet after that, I don't know. And then at the end, I normally say something silly like, oh, I just said something silly. Why? Because samples are valuable to people. I've got folders and folders full of stupid little samples. All my old songs have the kids in. And that's the things that people like, well, should we say, is it the prodigy? They got, they had to pay a certain amount of royalties for using a silly little sample of Heart and Noise. And I realized then, God, kids make these sounds every day. So I recorded them and I've got tons of them. But the truth is, samples are valuable to anybody that wants to try and make sound, audio, landscapes, songs, whatever. I've just always loved capturing audio. Don't know why. It's just what I do. I love it always have and it could be the silliest of things i mean like i've said on my website i live on cool edit pro 1.2 do you guys realize how old that is that's older than me and um i always believed that software was written for me or people like me and i'm still learning things in cool edit pro that i didn't know i just i just didn't know a long time ago i was using it for different jobs uh, maybe as we mature, we get better in what we do, or we love it more. Or maybe our intention is to become, I don't know, more quality as opposed to quantity. Don't know. I mean, if I'd say anything like that, I'm speaking out of turn because I'm not, not really thinking about it when I do it. Having said that, I haven't used the studio for over 20 years, slowly sticky taping it and plastering it back together. And boy, am I doing a good job. Am I doing a good job? You know, I'm 54, so I don't need to lie to you people out there. I'm doing a fucking good job. And um, it's such a pleasure to be back into it. It really is. I never missed it. I never missed it. I missed being a human being and going out there more. But I've had a bit of that, and I enjoy it. I've always been a human being, but I think for a while I just became a digi digital maniac. Don't know. So anyway, the studio's getting back together, so I always do a couple of tracks at the beginning. Um, the song I'm mixing has loaded up. I've done one stupid cheesy thing, taking my time, AO1. Taking your time to live your life, to see what it brings. Showing your care and showing your share. Everywhere around you It's times like these I know I'll be Where I need to be I know that my life has changed So have I as well And so I uh, I'm going to stop now I was going to record something else But I seem to be waffling on to myself About a lot of nothing really so I'll stick this up somewhere on the website and back to the remix and I'll give you all a clue.
What's my next task? What is my next purpose and my intent? My intent is to get that drill sound just right. So if you were to go on YouTube and look at drill music or whatever, that's my next intent and purpose. There's a few I've tackled and I've succeeded amazingly. I'll leave it at that. Um, I do have to work within the remit of the equipment I have. My brain doesn't necessarily always do that. If there's one generic music I'd love to tackle, it's Euphoria. But I know I haven't got the equipment. And I also haven't actually got the music skill. But the truth is, chords and progressions are based on maths. You could use maths to do it anyway. But I don't have the equipment. And I've always known that. I've really always known that. But that doesn't bother me. It really doesn't bother me. Um, so the, the drill thing is something that I'm curious about, especially with the bass. Because I loved Miami bass. So if you go back to the two live crew and all that stuff, that was amazing. That was an amazing time. And to this day, I would love to know where is Luke Skywalker Productions. He's one of the most amazing people. Anyway, I feel like shit. I got a cold. It's nice to get on the mic and say hello. And I, I will put this audio up, actually. Maybe I should do more of this. That's not a bad idea. Some sort of... um. Some sort of, uh, what do you call it? It's like a podcast, isn't it? There's a, do you know, talking about podcasts, I never forget over 30 years ago. I'm not really a religious person, but I'm very spiritual. And I believe in all faiths, all religions. <laughs> but there was this woman, I think her name was Lynn Gary. Oh, I'm going to get it all wrong. I know it. And she used to, she was a very devout Christian or Catholic, I'm not sure, very religious person. And she would just phone people and record the phone calls that they had for hours. And I think her son maintains it today because she's passed on. And I used to love listening to her. George Ann Hughes, thank you. Divine Interventions just spoke to me. George Ann Hughes. And I can't remember the show. Uh, the Bite Show. I think it's The Bite Show. And she was amazing bit of uh, useful or useless natter from me to you. God bless you all. God guide you all. And God protect you all. But I'm going. <laughs> I'm sneezing and coughing all over the place. Peace and blessings be upon you. JSM out. Bye. And um, one last thing I want to say, a couple of things really. Since getting it back together, at the moment, there is no real nice, convenient way that I like to play all my existing WAVs, my sounds, my audio into the studio and freestyle as I'm going along. So I'm basically saying everything you hear me doing, most of it is off actually the remix track because I can easily play just a drum loop in the background and freestyle to it. But it's really just me and the piano. And that is, honestly, it's shit. Because if I do that, I always go spiritual. And I don't mind that. I love it. It's part of me. But I do miss the wind and grind and the bump and jump and then the play it loud and let me hear your pump. So I need my beats. I need the loop library plugged in. I need my wives. I need a way to get it working with my setup seamlessly. And that's... The truth is that it's easy just to plug a couple of leads in, but if I don't like it, it ain't gonna happen. I, d I can't explain it. Things have to be done in a certain way. I'll be making a couple of posts on my website about the work I've just been doing the past couple of weeks. One is with the Blue Dog New Mark 900, and the, uh, that's a mi little mixing desk, and the SL1200. That's come out of the woodwork. I've got that back out. I've serviced both of them i've modified the mixer the mixer now does what i want it to do i don't use the crossfade and i don't use the switch on the mixer i've never been a re uh, an, an abnormal dj as such i'm brilliant at commercial stuff i've never done this crossfading mixing two songs seamlessly with a slider go i'm a scratcher and i like making things that i put into music 
I'm not interested in getting the same record on two turntables and then it's never been me. But I was never any good at using the switches and the slider on the mixes. And you have to bear in mind, when me and Mark did all this 20, 30 years ago, Mark's in the picture for the rave, uh, JSM and Evil T. So that's Mark, whenever you hear me say the name. But when we did that all that time ago, we never had SL1200s. Everyone we knew did. We didn't. We had to stick pennies on top of the needle. And we had to use bits of chewing gum here and there. And I did silly things like cut records down so they were easier to spin and melt the middle of the hole so it fitted on the pin exactly. Honestly, you should see. I'm going to show you all this eventually. You'll get to see it. It's been a blast. I've had a blast in my life. And um, maybe one or two of you would be interested in that. But um, So I've recently jazzed up the i've serviced the uh, sl1200 there was a few things playing up and it. it's working perfectly now so god bless that because i couldn't be without the 1200 but i only have it for playing my records playing my vinyl and scratching i'm not interested i haven't got two of them i'm not really interested in two and then the other thing i've done and i've only today just taken pictures and i say today it's saturday i'm not sure of the day um I'm not even sure if the studio PC has got the right date on. So I'm looking at a Windows 98 PC. Yeah, October the 8th, Saturday. Yeah, so it's got to be right. Um, so I, because I am focused on this mix, and I'm using the mix, this remix I'm doing for somebody, I must get her consent to put her name out there and bits of the audio if she consents she owns it in whole not in part everything i'm doing for the one particular song belongs to her entirely what she decides to do with it is up to her this is more of a a purposely driven intent on my part and we'll leave it at that um so anyway because i am using this mix as a vehicle for me to learn how to use my own fucking recording studio and trust me it's been hard work when i'm sitting in front of a sampler that i could use with my eyes shut 22 years ago 20 years ago and now i don't even understand what i'm looking at that's hard for me and um anyway so I've realized I need the S3000 because when you listen to beats coming out the S3000, they, they do have more oomph. They have more balls in them. Honestly, I've read enough about it. I love my 6000 to bits. The 6000 is a workhorse. If you've got lots of samples to trigger and you want them to trigger when you want, uh, it works. And I've never had a problem with it. But the 3000 it really does sound differently when you're listening to percussion. It's It's got more room at the bottom end. So I didn't have this permanently wired into the studio. Also, I've got a Yamaha Pro 1, which I have serviced from the top down. Uh, it's mad what I've done, but hey, it's me. When I when I have a an intention, it, it happens. It happens. It, it'll take a bit of time, but it will happen. Same as the mix, I might add. I know where it's going. This mix, I know exactly where it's going, but I just have to bide my time, you could say. So anyway, I've got this Akai S3000 that I need to wire in, but I've only got a 16-track mixer, and I'm already overloading it with 16 outputs of the 6000 and four outputs of the Corrigo 1. And I'm not one of these people that likes patch bays. I don't like plugging on. I do not like that shit. I like my stuff plugged in and left alone. Uh, I am again. It's more me that's the problem than the studio. So I also bought a second Yamaha Pro One only for spare parts and for the screen, because the screen and mine started flickering. And of course, the old one is well. It came out in nineteen ninety nine, I think, something like that. It's ancient. It's ancient. It's ancient like me. So um, I decided I'll buy one as cheap as I can. And I'll keep it as spare parts. But by the time I'd switched the screens and serviced it, and when I service it, I mean strip it right down. I use a whole bottle of isopropanol and I clean it properly. I couldn't believe how well it was working. So I ended up changing all the micro switches on both mixes, including the, the spare one. 
Okay, the sliders aren't as fast, but it doesn't matter. I'm not using it as a responsive mixer. It's basically just allowing me to send another six. It's not 16. One of the channels on it's broken, but I can live with that. So I'm effectively sending it into a stereo pair on my mixer. Not the best way to work, I know, but it's it's what I have to do. And at first, I had it sitting on the table. So whenever my little boy, John, he's five now, comes up and... What, oh, he's six. He was six two days ago. When he comes and plays in the studio, there was no space on the table because I had an Akai S3000 up there and a Yamaha 01 Pro Mixer on top of it. And I, and I just couldn't hack it. I just couldn't handle it. So I've spent the last two to three weeks building a case for that and you'll see the pictures on the web it's, i'll put them up and also um oh yeah the uh sl 1200 and the blue dog again going back to the the switching effectively what i've done to my blue dog mixer is i have put a little plug in that when you plug a lead in with a switch at the end i switch the volume on and off of the record and luckily, I've got two of these little mixers because, again, I needed some spare parts. And it's better just to buy a second-hand one that somebody's literally given away. I think it cost me £15. And the funny thing is, when I first did this 20 years ago, I had to design a little circuit using capacitors to make sure that whenever I clicked the button, the click wasn't louder than the music you were switching on and off. You were getting a popping effect off every single click. Now, because what, this, what the crossfaders do now is they the variable resistor to turn the sound down goes to zero resistance. So effectively, you're shorting the, the pre-audio to ground. That's I, I'm assuming that's what I'm right in saying. So all I needed to do was to put, use the switch to do the same thing. And boy, is it clean. And when I started playing with the switch, I could feel my um, very good scratching abilities coming back very, very quickly. So, I mean, you'll hear it eventually and you'll be able to hold me to account. I don't care. I know when I'm good and I'm good. It's that simple. Same as all you out there. There comes a time in your life when you know what you know. And that is part of your purpose, as it is mine. So, I've been a busy boy. Getting all this kit and getting it back up to a stage where I can literally plug and play. But like I say... All the crap you can hear of mine on the internet, and half of it I can't even play when I'm recording like I'm recording now. That's still worlds apart, and I'm not happy just to plug two leads in when I'm fighting for all the inputs I've got. I'm going to have to try and find a few more inputs for this mix, because I'm now implementing another idea to do with the bass, and... Um, I've already maxed out the RAM. I'm on 230 megabytes to 256, which is amazing. That's a hell of a lot of space. And I need more. But of course, that's that's what we do, isn't it? When we've got something, we always want more. It's fun. It's fun, but it's hard work sometimes. So I'm going to splice this little bit that I recorded later onto the other one, and I'll chuck together a little audio past audio podcast whatever you want to call it so i'm gonna love you and leave you switch off and i'm actually gonna go on to the mix now and i've got a funny feeling i must say this i was gonna chuck something together for the original um the singer and that was it i was gonna make a commercial poppy version but i have to be honest with you it's gone way beyond that it's gone way beyond that it's gone way beyond that i said it three times it's it's teaching me and it's guiding me and it's letting me thank god for that song because it's helping me when i need that help because i couldn't have come in here and started another song because that would not have happened while you're building up your studio you see another thing i had 22 years ago i could press one button with a, another set of buttons that were predefined and determined. I didn't have to touch them. And the whole studio switched on within a minute. And depending on the other switches, you'd only switch on the recording studio, or you'd switch on the MIDI studio, or you'd just switch on the PC for the internet. So 
I haven't got that at the moment, and that's hard. That's hard because I like. It's like I said, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get me to use a patch bay unless I really have to. And there's a story behind that because I've got a one, two, three, yeah, I've got an eight bay patch bay above my Yamaha Pro mixer, which I made out of wood, scrap aluminium, and this, that, and the other. But it works. It does the job. But I had to do that because I'm always having to plug in the keyboard and unplug, and I hate plugging in and out the back of the mixer because these things are old and they're struggling. But anyway, it's fun. It's part of the pleasure. It's part of the fun. But I could not have made a song in a productive, constructive way while I'm still busy trying to build my studio. So I just basically decided, oh, I'll try one of these uh, remixes I did ages ago. And luckily, one of the artists was still out there, like me. I, honestly, um, I'm, in, I'm from the days of the mix mag and future music, the early days, and I just put adverts in the back of that magazine, you know, I'll remix your song free of charge uh, if you just let me have your samples. And I did a few, but sadly not everybody's out there anymore. They move on. They have kiddies like we did and like I did. It's just, it's life. Life gets in the way of life, but that's part of the pleasure as well. So anyway, I'm going to go. I'm definitely going to make sure all this gets on my website. So I wish you all well. God bless you all, God protect you all, and God guide you all. I love you all. Peace and blessings. JSM is officially out. Oh, Allah, Allah, Oh, Allah, Allah,